Welcome, everybody. This is Conrad and Susan from ConradRocks.net. God bless you. Thank you for coming in to our live stream. We had a false alarm last week. I told you we were going to pick up on X, but we had like, yeah, it's, it's public. We had a, a false alarm last week, and uh, sorry about that. We just kind of deleted it and snuck through to this week. But we're picking up in X uh, 4.13. Uh, on and um, I guess we have some announcements. Do we have announcements? Well, we just have things that we did. We had a fun time. It's probably the main reason we've been we've been busy. So we, we were having of, fun instead of doing Bible studies. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah. Well, we met Francisco. He's in the Mississippi Heritage Aviation Museum in Gulfport. And he is awesome. Um, if you live anywhere near Gulfport, y'all should check out that museum. He put it together. I guess he started a year ago, and in six months, he had it up, and it's been open for six months. So mm -hmm. it's kind of amazing what he's put together. But he's a Christian, and he was excited, and he had all kinds of testimonies about people helping him put that together. One so right after the other. We had a good time meeting him. And so we've been you know, doing the vacation thing. This summer, we, were, we went to Petrie mm -hmm. yeah. and we're going back. Unfortunately, I oh, had an yeah. uncle pass away this unexpectedly a couple yeah. of days ago. So we are headed back to Petrie to a funeral. So not the best circumstance to be going to Petrie, but we're, it's, it's always good to see family. So we'll get to see a lot more of our family on Amen. this trip. Amen. Now, something I wanted to say is I'm doing these Team Jesus tracks. This is my own personal testimony. I've been handing out quite a bit. Um, I made these for free on Canva. Canva is canva.com for those. I thought everybody knew what Canva was, but people are asking me. Um, it's canva.com. I go into the brochures and look into the trifolds. I just did my own story, man, and I'm really compelled to hand these out. I've been handing out quite a bit. It's really easy. You just go up to people and say, hey, this is my personal testimony. I'm compelled to do it. You know, like we're going to find today, uh, people are empowered by the Holy Spirit to talk about Jesus. And, uh, the, you know, can pray about doing your own. And if if I get enough people messaging me, I will probably do a YouTube video to show you how you do it. But you got to I got to have enough people interested before I before I do that. OK, so um, let's pray in and. And do the Bible study. Is there anything else? I don't think so. OK. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for this opportunity. to for I, I just get excited about doing a Bible study in Acts because, Lord, you, you prophesied in Daniel. Those that do know their God will do exploits, and I get excited even in this prayer, God, that this, this is contagious, Lord. I pray that these exploits that these people did, these men and women, brave men and women, empowered by the Holy Spirit to do Acts, I pray that we catch some of that, Lord, and I pray that we can get bold and do acts in the face of danger, Lord. I thank you that the healing was going on then, and it goes on today. Lord, I thank you that you're going to give us kingdom keys, and I, I pray for this rhema revelation, God. I pray that that through what we say today and when we open our mouth, that you fill it, that our tongues are the pen of a ready writer, and just something just, bam, just, just activates people to get excited and do things for God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to share the screen here, and Susan is going to read Acts 4, 13 through 22. Okay. okay. So here's Peter again with, um, who's he with? John. I he's with John, and they are basically standing before the Pharisees getting told off, or maybe it's the Sadducees. Anyway, they've just healed somebody. So picking up in verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? 
for that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. Amen. I, you know what? I was looking at the live stream and captions are coming through. How awesome, awesome is that? That's live captions. I know. StreamYard's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, Facebook's stream, awesome. StreamYard, Facebook, awesome. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, what I do is we don't do we don't exegete, but we kind of go verse by verse. Susan wants to probably go a little faster than that, but there's so much in each verse that I that we got to talk about it. You know what I mean? Um, trying to find out what that rubbing noise is. Is that me? I don't know. Okay, Acts four thirteen. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge and that they've been with Jesus. Now, no, notice the Holy Spirit gives you boldness. In Acts 4.31, we're going to see here that they were emboldened again. And um, notice that they were unlearned and ignorant men. I looked up at the uh, the original Greek, and you might find this funny. Un unlearned is Greek 2399, which is idiotes. So it means idiot. 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 Yeah. idiot. But also, idiot doesn't necessarily mean idiot. I mean, in, at the time that this was uttered, it's also meant a private person, uh, an ignoramus. That's what it says, an ignoramus, idiot, ignorant, rude, or unlearned. And then it says unlearned, and that's the Greek agramatos, which means basically illiterate. They did not study at the feet of any of the doctors of the law. Like like Paul, we're going to see, he was not unlearned. He was learned. He said at the feet of Gamaliel. So that was, uh, that was that. And guess what? They had took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So you don't need a PhD. Well, I think what set them apart is that... Um, that's not what you would have expected during that time for someone that's an ordinary fisherman with no doctrine, really, had never been brought up to learn all that, to stand up and speak in the way that they were speaking. Uh, and, of course, the miracle, too, added to that. And so they took them seriously because they they knew there was something really going on here. Unfortunately, what it was going on in the eyes of these Pharisees was they were about to lose everything uh, that they had under the Roman rule. The Romans were allowing them to continue with their synagogues and their traditions, and they were fearful that all of that was going to be taken away because of these men. Right. Amen. And they took knowledge that they'd been with Jesus. You'll notice that and I, I always talk about Paul on his road to Damascus. You know, he was Saul, became Paul, Saul Paul. And um, he was learned. And he was so caught up in his theology. Now, here's the problem. You get so caught up in your theology that you actually ignore large portions of Scripture. These people that said that they were ignorant and unlearned, they were ignoring Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, I believe, they were ignoring these passages which clearly pointed that the Messiah should suffer. It's called the suffering servant passage in Isaiah 52 and 53. So we do that ourselves. The more we learn at the feet of man, we put on what I like to call spiritual blinders, and, and we block the spirit of truth. I know that might sound weird, but we're actually doing that. So I'm on the, I'm on the hunt now to be with Jesus, to spend time with him. 
You know, when uh, God told Joshua, he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In it, you will meditate day and night, and with it, you'll have good success. When we meditate on these scriptures, God meets us there. Even, I mean, there there is there is great uh, value in having mentors, but you can see here, they obviously didn't know God, and we're about to find that out, and they obviously rejected, even though they've seen these miracles, they reject everything. And we see this in verse 14. And beholding the man which was healed with them, they could say nothing against it, but they wanted to. First, there was something driving them, you know? Their whole, I mean, their entire, they were completely mesmerized and focused on one thing, and that was stopping this movement. They, they wanted nothing to do with it. They wanted it to quickly die out. They hadn't, there was none of them that were looking and wondering, maybe this is the Messiah, or at least you don't hear about it. Um, I mean, there maybe there were some people that were wondering, but they would never have voiced that publicly because they would have been, you know, maybe stoned right along with the others. So, yeah. See, these these things that happen would be compelling evidence today. But you know how when we read in the Bible, we'll be reading uh, and it'll say, yeah, the guy was healed and, you know, he takes up his bed and he just got healed in front of these Pharisees. And they don't say, wow, man, look, dude, praise God, you're healed. They say, hey, why are you carrying your bed on the Sabbath? It's like, duh, did you just a miracle just happened here. Anyway, so there was not they could say nothing against it. One thing interesting here, I looked up the Greek for the word healed, and this is pretty interesting. It's uh it's ther therapy. It's uh ther therapio, Greek twenty three twenty three. Isn't that interesting? Therapy. Um Acts four fifteen, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. And they, you know, they you'll notice several times in in the New Testament in the Gospels there they're always trying to come up with a plan to stop Jesus, and uh, and there's no prayer going on in any of these encounters. Not by the Pharisees, no. No, they're not praying. They don't want to know. They're not seeking God on this. They're trying to stamp out this movement quickly. Well, what are they leaning to? They're leaning to their carnal reasoning of the scriptures. You see what I'm saying? They're leaning to their carnal, and this is what we do today, which we need to avoid. We wade into the water with our carnal mind, but once we're, but we need to seek seek the spirit of truth to guide us into all truth. I wonder if they had an internal struggle there, like I, I like like when Paul was killing the Christians, when Paul was going about with letters of authority, he thought he was doing the right thing. But I'm going to tell you, I have a sneaking, I have this idea. That deep down in Paul's spirit, he knew something wasn't right. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? We do things because everybody else is doing. It's called the argumentum ad populum. Just because everybody else is doing it, we go. We think they must be right. And we also do something called trust the experts. All the experts are saying Jesus isn't the Messiah. But I, I know the spirit. There's a spirit in man like Elihu says in the book of Job. And I, I believe that they were suppressing their spirit very much like I did when God's been talking to me for decades. I'd ignored them. I was suppressing the spirit, even though I knew it was true deep down. And I wonder if these people did that or were they sheep and goats, wheat and tares, right? They're sons of the wicked one. So it's an argument for another day, I guess. Um, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, a notable miracle hath been done by them and is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem. Um, and we cannot deny it. Of course, we've kind of been over that already. Well, you have to consider that, if, you know, on the day of Pentecost, thousands of people came into the kingdom. So this is, it's exploding. People are coming to the disciples they're hearing about the miracles they're witnessing the miracles and so they are they're kind of at a loss as to how to stop this because the more they try to stop it the worse it seems to get yeah it's kind of like greek fire if you guys don't know what greek fire is it uh it, it's something the secret has already died but during the thousand year reign of constantinople some of the kings 
um, had uh, figured out how to make this fire, and it was a secret. It was only kept by a few few people, and and they made this fire that when you tried to put water on it, it would just keep spreading. Anyway, pretty interesting. So j this is kind of like the gospel, you know. No, no matter how much you try to stop it, it just keeps on going. Now they're continuing in verse 17, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly notice the spellings S T R A I T L Y, threaten them that they speak no forth um, to no man in this name. Now, like I said, these people are selfish. They they don't want to lose their their place or their nation. And the reason I pointed out straight. Um, it's an interesting English word. It means surrounded with obstacles. Like when people say, I walk the straight and narrow that comes from, um, straight is the way and narrow is the path. Well, straight means it's surrounded with optical obstacles. It doesn't mean just straight, like a straight line. You got anything there? You good? Okay, and then they call well, them. Wait, wait a second. That, right. that, you know, it's important here that they're teaching in the name of Jesus. So That's they're good. carrying on the mission of Jesus, and they are the Jesus. I mean, the thing is, when Jesus ascended and the Holy Spirit fell, there, was one, ju there wasn't just Jesus anymore. Because when Jesus was around, yeah, their apostles did go out and do some things. But he was the centerpiece, and everybody came to Jesus. But, well, now... It's not just Jesus, it's all of the apostles and others too, besides the 12 that were out there um, casting out demons and performing miracles. So it was spreading and the movement was growing exponentially during this time. Right, right. And, and when I, I've talked about name before in podcasts and YouTube videos, but the Greek word is anoma. And it basically gives the idea of authority and character. So in the nature, character, and authority of Jesus Christ. So that's what it means. It doesn't mean when you take the name of the Lord in vain, when you say GD, you know, that's cursing. That's calling, invoking the name, the, the title of your God. God is a title, not a name. And then, then you're cursing. But taking the name of the Lord in vain means calling yourself a Christian and not being one. You're not operating in his uh, authority and character. You see what I'm saying? All right. Um, verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. And I, I think that, that I talked about this maybe the last time. I, I notice here that Christians in Romans 13 and a couple of places in the New Testament um, Peter talks about it. Paul talks about it. Hebrews talks about it. We're to submit to authority. You know, in Romans 13 is like even the secular authority because they're acting as ministers doing the Lord's will. And here's a, here's a case of heretics calling real people heretics, real, real believers heretics. And here you are, here you are obeying these people that aren't hearing from God. Can you imagine how frustrating that is? It's like you have to obey heretics. And uh, then Peter answers here and says, he, he points it out. And notice that they don't respond. Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, you know, you that don't have a relationship <laughs> with God, more than to God, judge ye. Anyway, he was in their face. I mean, in their face, basically saying, you don't hear from the Spirit of God, you know? Well, and they're basically saying that's not something we can do. We cannot help but speak. I mean, they can't help but speak, teach, and heal and do what they're doing. They're compelled to do those things. So they didn't really ever say they were going to stop. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Yeah. The cool thing about Acts 420 here, when I looked at other, I'm like, what does this mean? I look, sometimes I'll compare versions. It'll say um, in Bible and basic English, for it's not possible for us to keep from saying what we've seen and have knowledge of. In the contemporary English, it says, for we cannot keep quiet 
about what we've seen and heard, which paints a little different. I, I understand it differently now, but I but I believe that what they're saying is we can't help but preach the gospel. We can't help it. We've got to do it. Kind of like Jeremiah says, it's fire shut up in my bones. Or Paul says, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. He has no choice. They've got to do it. It's got to come out. Amen. I think I even wrote down the complete Jewish Bible. Let's see. Complete Jewish Bible, which is a good version, by the way. As for us, we can't help talking about what we've actually seen and heard. Pretty good stuff. Uh, 421. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go finding nothing, how they might punish them because of the people, for all men glorified God, for which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on this miracle. was Healing was showed. So, they threatened him some more. I mean, what are they going to do? <laughs> what are they going to do? Well, they knew that crowd was going to turn on them, and they... Yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like who who do you say that the Stop baptism it. of John the Baptist was when the Pharisees are all talking to themselves when he goes from heaven or from man and the Pharisees go oh, well if it's from heaven the people believe John's a prophet you know they they just they're trying to get out of it they can't though it's kind of like that who was it looking for a loophole when they're reading the Bible what was that Mark What's Twain that? Mark Twain hey what are you doing reading the Bible oh I'm looking for a loophole I don't think it was Mark Twain it's somebody like that though. All right, well, we've been going uh, 20 minutes. Do you want to continue on or pick up next week? Um, I think we could probably pick up next week. Okay. All right, then. So some of the takeaways that I get tonight is this. The Holy Spirit empowers people to move. And we're going to find out next week that when the people... When, they, when the people are in this, you know, they're, behold their threatenings. They're going to say, behold their threatenings. And they don't pray for self-preservation. They pray for boldness so they can preach some more. We're going to find that out next week. And I think God is honored by the behavior of, of um, Peter and John. I mean, they're, they're clearly not holding back. You know, they're saying they could have said, okay, yeah, sure, we won't preach. They could have said that. Even if they didn't mean it, they could have said it, but they didn't. They chose to be honest and to stand up to these people that, you know, probably could have hurt them. I mean, they, Jesus is was crucified. After all, they saw it happen. So they know it's possible that they could be crucified, too. So I just think Peter God is honored by that. Later. And he was later. But I think God's Holy Spirit moves when we step out in faith. He loved, there's, there's nothing quicker to God's heart than being a person of faith. And if you look through scripture, the people that just trusted God when, you know, when, when D David stood up to Goliath, there was no reason for David to have succeeded in that task, but because he had faith, God rewarded his faith. So God loves faith, and so good things happen to these disciples because of their faith. You see Boaz behind you? Yeah, he's hanging out with me. Boaz is so cool. <laughs> okay, let's pray out then. Um, Lord, we thank you, God, for this opportunity like I said, I just go, I get so excited about going over Acts, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity to just share the nuggets and the, the rocks of revelation that you poured out, God. And I pray that I pray that the people listening to this podcast, this teaching, Lord, I pray that they get excited about the things of God and open up the book that has the treasures that can move mountains, the treasures of faith that can move mountains. And God, I pray for this coming week, Lord, I pray that you pour out your spirit on those of us that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, Lord. And I pray that you you embolden us to move. Fill us with your spirit so that we can act. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to read your word and, and the technology to be able to do these Bible studies. Uh, we can converse with people all around the world, Lord, and and 
how blessed are we and forgive us for being um, taken, you know, not taking advantage of the opportunities you give us to, to read your word, to study and to share what we know with others. Lord, help us all to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and, and to be uh, led in paths of righteousness for your namesake, Lord, let our light shine before men so that they can glorify God because of um, things that we've said or done. I pray that the words that were spoken here, that were of you will will remain and anything else will fall to the ground. And I pray that the those that hear this, um, that you will give them, will grant them that, that um, passion, that desire to read the word and to learn more about you and the work that you did through your apostles and continue to do to this very day. And we ask you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You know, before we end this, I'm going to, I'm going to put a link in the show notes. I was thinking about ignorant and unlearned men. There's this great book and Kevin Reardon turned me on to it. It's called the heavenly man. Oh. Our brother Yoon. This guy's in China, right? He's in China. There's he's ignorant and unlearned about the things of God. Right. And then you got to read this book. I'll put the link in the show notes. But he he gets empowered. With, some guy from two cities over. The Bible is so rare in China. Somebody two cities over by the power of the Holy Spirit brought him this Bible, and then just amazing things happen. Kind of like the Book of Acts here. I mean, you get you just get all excited when you read it. It was a good book, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. All right. I'll put it in the show notes. God bless you. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go, go higher. higher.